Hi there, Robin here, and in this video we're going to be talking about Pyle's Elite Series. This is their marine amplifier, the PLMR A420, it's their 1000 watt amplifier, and we're going to get into details on that in a minute, but we also want to talk about their 430BT. Now these are two amplifiers that are identical in every way except the 30BT is going to offer Bluetooth. So everything I talk about the 420 applies to the 430 except if you want to have Bluetooth, so you don't plan on having a head unit to go part of the amplifier and you want to go straight from the amplifier to the speakers and use your phone, uh, you can get the 430BT and that's just going to give you the Bluetooth option on top of everything else we're about to talk about when it comes to this 420. So what makes this part of their Elite Series is the fact that it has built-in crossovers into it and you have options like full range coming in full range coming out or I can set it to low for the subs or I can set it to high if I want to run uh, you know mid bass or tweeters off of it which is really a nice way to go with the amp. Now when you're running it independently so we're running all the channels in stereo we can have channel one two three or four we can set them up as stereo and they'll run anywhere between two to four ohms as a load. If we're running them for subwoofers it'll run between four and eight ohms. Here in our showroom, we actually have this unit running two six and a half speakers plus on top of that two 12 inch subwoofers. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look see at the actual RCA, the preamp line in on the actual amplifier, and then we'll take a look at the outputs. So this is the input side when it comes to your audio. There's two ways to get audio into this. We can either use the RCA plugs, which are located here, one, two, three, and four, or you can use the high level inputs which are what these are now these plug into these slots here on both sides you get two of them of course with the actual unit now these look like well speaker wires and they are the idea here is that if i don't have access to rcs off a head unit or this amplifier is in the back and all i really have wiring access to are the speakers in the back i can use these to tap into so i'm not replacing my rear speakers with this i'm tapping into it and it's going to listen into the lines and it's going to basically bring it in here transfer it into an actual line level connection and do all of that internally so you don't have to buy any additional hardware you're going to get two of these with it and again that's if you don't have rcas this is your alternative is the quality of the sound that it's going to get off of these guys as good as the rcs no but for a lot of folks this is the right option to actually get it all hooked up. Now, besides that, we've got a lot of actual dials and switches on the unit. It's broken up into two halves. So we've got this side here, which is for channel three and four, and then this side here, which is for channel one and two. The very first knob here is going to be our level. That's our, it's going to be how much gain do we actually pick up off of the RCA plugs. That's going to be adjusted here. Then we have a switch, and the switch is to decide what we're going to do with these two channels. So in this case, We've got full, low, and high frequency settings right here. Now, a couple of things to take note of is that on channel three, it says low in. So if I'm just plugging a single channel into here for my actual subwoofer, I'll set this to low, and I only need to really plug in this channel three. If I'm gonna use it for highs only, so that's, let's say my plans are just to have the five and a quarters and six and a halves run, but I don't really want bass in it at all. I wanna cut that off and just get a mid bass to high level off of that. I'm gonna set it at the HPF. Now, if my intention is to run some wakeboard speakers with it, so I've got a couple of nice wakeboard speakers, I want to run that off. I'm going to go to full range and run that full tilt off the amplifier. The next ones are going to be some gain adjustments. Again, these are bracketed on to channel three and four, so this side specifically. We've got our bass boost, so if we do find that we're lacking a little bit of the bottom end, especially if we don't have any adjustments on our actual head unit to do this, I can increase or decrease the amount of bass boost. If you add too much bass boost, you will distort the speakers because you're going to hit the limit of the amplifier a lot sooner. Right beside the bass boost, you're going to get an LPF, a low frequency crossover point. That's going to be between 35 hertz and 400 hertz. Then beside that, you're going to get a high frequency crossover point which can be set from as low as 88 all the way to 2.5 kilohertz. That's what these two adjustments right here are for. Now we do have a red light and a green light. Green light indicates power. The red light is for protection mode. Don't short your amp out. Don't overexert it. We don't really want to see this light on, but if it does go on very minor, if you hit it hard, if you short it out real hard at full volume, you can cause permanent lockup damage inside of it. So we try to avoid that. On this side, you're gonna repeat everything. This is channel one and two. So all those frequencies. So it's a mirror image of what's happened over on channel three and four. So we start off with the high frequency crossover point, then the low frequency, 
then the base boost, and then the actual settings. And again, the switch itself is set up backwards to this switch, where this one goes full, low, high. This one goes high, low, full. And again, level adjustments in the channel one, two, and again, the high pass input connections right here. So let's take a look at all the big cable connections. So on this side, we're gonna see channel one, two, three, four. We're gonna also see a ground, a remote, and a 12 volt, two fuses. So the actual amp is separated into two halves when it comes to power. If we look at this on the bottom, on channel one and two, of course we get positive, negative, positive, negative. Then on the bottom, it says bridged and it says positive and then skips all the way across to negative. That's how we bridge the amp. Those two terminals there, that's how we go for our subwoofer. I can, again, internally here, we are running two 12 inch subwoofers connected right off here. So we're running our two fours in an eight ohm pattern. Then we have channel three and four, which are being used for six and a halves. So now, of course, this can be anything, six and a half, six by nine, five and quarters, whatever you wanna have, that's your option. You can run in any configuration. You can use it all four speakers, or you can separate your subs up across both sides. After that, we've got the grounding screw. That's our negative connection to our battery. On the opposite side, we've got our positive, and right in the middle, that's the remote. That's the blue wire from your actual radio. That's the trigger wire that's going to turn the amp on and off when you turn your head unit on and off. If you're not using a head unit, you may want to add this to a switch off of the positive. That allows you to be able to turn the amp on and off from the front without having to actually do a big heavy wire disconnect. Small trigger wire going to the actual 12 volt positive is going to turn it on and off. So let's get a little technical. This is the instruction manual. It's also where you're gonna find the actual features and specifications of the amplifier. Now, this is not a number that they put out there. So I'm gonna first say, I really like this amp. It serves 80% of the people out there who need to run maybe some subs, six and a half, eight inch, that sort of thing. So let's say you spent over a thousand dollars on speakers because you've got a wakeboard set up and you want to have four big speakers and you've spent a lot of money. You're probably not going to be buying this amp. Now, that being said, you're probably not even watching this video. But if you're like everybody else who really wants to add some bass to their boat, add more speakers, get some more volume out of your boat, this is going to be the amp. It is powerful. It is loud. Now, for the real numbers, the actual not the peak number that they put on the box. Now, lots of manufacturers do this, so don't be surprised when you hear it. It is at four ohms, four times 35 watts. Can't lie to you, it's written right here. And at uh, two ohms, it's uh, four times 50 watts. A maximum power output, 250 watts on all four channels. Now, that means a thousand watts, there you go. That's where the thousand comes from. Now, that being said, let me define an amp. This is not a head unit. Head unit, if we were to say the power that comes out of your head unit, think of that as a garden hose. This is a fire hose. So the rate, how fast the water's coming out of the end of the hose is the same. The difference is the overall size of that hose. This is gonna have a lot more control and power to operate those speakers, especially the subwoofers, that your head unit's never gonna have. It's just proportionate in size. So that's really what's going on here. So do I recommend this guy? Absolutely. Take your time, hook it up right, follow the instructions, or watch the how-to videos on it, it really helps in getting this amp to work well. Balance it off slowly, bring up the volume slowly, set the gains up slowly. Once you do that, you'll find a comfortable volume level for your speakers with this amplifier. And that'll be it. It'll be nice, it'll be loud, it'll be clean and clear. It works out really well for a lot of people. So again, don't be overly surprised by the numbers not being, you know, thousand watts. That's a peak number and that's okay. But remember, it's think of it again, if we use another analogy, it's like cars. You get some cars that say, ooh, horsepower, 450 horsepower on it. And then you get these big dump trucks that brag and say, ooh, 450 horsepower. We know that that muscle car is not the same as that dump truck. That dump truck, for some magical reason, with the same amount of horsepower, somehow has, of course, a lot more power and energy to it. It can move an entire truckload of dirt. That car will never do that. And we're just talking about the engine, and we're just talking about the horsepower. Same thing applies to amplifier. Head unit power and amplifier power, though the numbers may seem relatively similar, way different when it comes to how much energy comes out of this thing. So there you go. There's a lot of other technical stuff on here, but that is the real number that we really need to talk about. Power, how it's used, and how it works. Again, I really like this amp. It's our number one selling amp. It's the amp that I recommend to everybody. So there you go. If you want Bluetooth, remember you can get the 430 BT if you don't plan on using a head unit. Outside of that, you can use one of these for any job that you have. 
as long as it's within reason. I certainly hope this video helped you out in your buying decision today. I'd like to say thanks for watching. Maybe we'll see you in the next video and bye for now.